the Advanced Tech Podcast, providing a spotlight for innovators and disruptors. For links and show notes, and to find out how to sponsor the Advanced Tech Podcast, go to advancedtechmedia.org. You can also find and sponsor us on Patreon. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, please take a moment to subscribe and give us a rating. You can also sponsor us using Bitcoin at advancedtechmedia.org slash sponsor. Before we get into the show, I'd like to take a moment to welcome new sponsor, Citadel 21. You've seen this amazing magazine online and in print, hopefully. If you haven't and you'd like to win a six-month subscription, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, retweet us on Twitter. This will be a video episode, so please like us on YouTube and other video platforms once we're there, and we'll pick a winner soon. So welcome to the Advanced Tech Podcast. Joining me today is Rick from CryptoCloaks, and CryptoCloaks creates amazing 3D printed artifacts, so he prints things like cases for your Bitcoin node, grenades, and what other products do you have? Oh man, we have a bunch. Uh, we have a whole bunch of like coasters, knickknacks, kind of stuff like that, and keychains, a lot of notes cases are our biggest ones, and then our Bitcoin grenades are definitely our hottest items out of all of them. And then we have other little cases that are just storage boxes and stuff like that. So one of the goals of this podcast is to showcase people that are uh, truly building good quality things. Um, and whether that's an idea, a product, whether they're contributing to the Bitcoin ecosystem, there's a lot of really solid projects out there, and this is a very solid community, including the artists, and that includes the memers. <laughs> yeah, that's an art of itself. It is. It is. Meme warfare, I think, is something that we're going to see a little friendly fire between uh, between groups. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, Greg, tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about how you got started. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I got into Bitcoin probably at the end of uh, 2017, early 2018, when the whole boom and rush was going on. And I really, really went down the rabbit hole when I kind of brought in 3D printing into it. So after I got into Bitcoin and started learning the little basics of it and getting like a, a hard wallet to store your keys and stuff like that, I was kind of thinking, well, I want to be able to have my hard wallet underneath my desk or somewhere safe so it's not just sitting on my desk so anybody can grab it. And that's really where everything took off for me and where the rabbit hole started. And now it's four years later and here we are designed a 3D printed mount and printed it off and then uh, figured somebody else would probably want it. And that's where Crypto Cloaks all began. Just uh, designing one Ledger Nano S mount. And then now we're here doing node cases and grenades and everything else we can possibly do. That's awesome. And yeah, that's how everything starts. It usually starts out with solving a, a problem. And then you realize pretty quickly, hey, this is something that's a common problem that could scale. And it's one of the best ways a business scales. So never discount that uh, that idea that you can probably fix something because you probably can. Yeah. Um, so with that said, why 3D printing? Uh, so I really got into 3D printing in my senior design class for college, a graduating year. I was in charge of running the 3D printer for our group project. And that's where I kind of really fell in love with the whole aspect of design and watching the coding of it and then watching the physical object come off of a computer and like everything you can hold it in your hand. And after that, I just bought my own printer out of college. And then now I have, I don't even know, 17, 18 printers running on a print farm. It really came down to that one senior design project. And I kind of fell in love with the whole aspect of it. And just the fact with 3D printing is you can design anything you want and you can print it at your house. You don't have to always rely on other places. And that's what I try to push for is... Everybody should have a 3D printer too. We talk about Bitcoin and decentralization. 3D printers are just a whole nother aspect of that decentralization. You can print and design anything you want and print it at your house and just use it. There's stuff around the house here that breaks all the time. And I just find a file online or I design it myself, a replacement part. You print it out and you use it and it works again. So I think that's where I really fell in love with 3D printing is the whole fact you can just do it all yourself if you want. Yeah, there's a really strong hacker community within Bitcoin and within the cypherpunks. And, you know, it comes down to solving, like, you know, code is building something. Um, okay, so we talked about, so we talked about 3D printing and uh, how you got into it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. Why Bitcoin? What's your Bitcoin origin story? It really came down to, I would say, like, in-game currencies, too, is kind of where I really grasped the whole concept of it. And 
it really wasn't a screw the system over or fuck the system kind of thing at first. And this Bitcoin will fix like the money altogether. It was more of, I think everybody kind of hops in hoping to make a buck. You try to make a quick buck and then you stay for the, the technology and whatever it is. And that really, that really hit me hard. Cause once, once you're in it and you start to make some money, or even if you don't, and you start to actually learn about Bitcoin itself and you go down that whole rabbit hole, that's where everything changed for me. I mean, I think, I think that happens to a lot of people. They get it, they come for the money and they stay for what it actually truly is all about once they take that deep dive down. Yeah, hundred percent. There's a lot of really cool second order things that happen when you start examining what is money. And it's funny because it's the, the question that's never answered in school. <laughs> yeah, they don't like to talk about it for a reason. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I think that that's one thing that gives me a lot of hope in this space is that people, you know, when Satoshi released uh, the white paper October 31st, uh, 2008, and then released the code in January, um, on January 3rd, 2009, you know, that's uh, coming up on 13 years. Yeah. And I don't know if um, he fully grasped at the time what he or she or they were creating. But I don't I'm think they were either. grateful. Right. I <laughs> It's really hard, like what's what's all going around the world and right now, and all like governments printing money and all this crazy stuff. It it's really hard to be hopeful in our future, but I, I know a lot of Bitcoiners feel the same way, and it's literally Bitcoin gives us hope to actually look towards something in the future. Like Bitcoin can literally change the entire world, and that actually makes me happy and like worthwhile to be like, yes, we can fight for something good in our future. Exactly. Yeah, it's so important to. I mean, there's. There's always been organizations, um, yeah, the the recording that uh, this will be, well, not this full episode, but uh, yeah. the one just previous, is pretty long. It's pretty philosophical. <laughs> you, you got cosmic with it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to do that, right? Oh, 100%. I like listening to those ones. That's the best part where they just go completely futuristic or like all the, it's nuts. Some of those that I listen to are insane. But it's so good because the thing that with Bitcoin is that you're exploring, you're exploring the idea. It's not, uh, you know, we're not censored. We're all about not censoring. Um, it's private. Well, it's pseudonymous, but the whole community, there's a, a privacy aspect, especially yeah. in the cypherpunk community. So it's kind of like the safe space where you can choose what you want to reveal to the world. Yeah, absolutely. I love that about it. So what are some of the things in Bitcoin? I guess of, of all the things in Bitcoin, what are the three most important things to you? The most important things of Bitcoin. Oh man. Okay. That the supply never changes from 21 million. I think that is probably the most important part of everything. The second would probably be lightning on top of Bitcoin. I think it'll really change the whole aspect of everything. And looking at how that technology is progressing and everything like that is mind boggling to me. And I'm, I'm thankful that I can build cool cases to really showcase those nodes and the technology itself and the hardware. Because I, I think that'll be a game changer here as that keeps progressing and expanding. Just watching the Lightning node expand over the last like four years that I've been running within it, it's, it's insane. Um, and number three, I would have to just say that it, the best aspect of it is it, it literally gives the power back to the people, right? You don't have the central banks or anybody else really controlling the money. You are your own bank. I don't have to go into a bank and say, hey, I need to go transfer a thousand dollars to this person and now I have to spend hundreds of dollars in fees. It's literally, hey, what's your address? I'm gonna send you some Bitcoin and they have the money right there within like 10 minutes. Like that is the biggest game changer ever. It, you don't have to always rely on a middleman. And that's what I love. Like middlemen are just there to scrape a fee off the top and then keep going. Why do, why do we need them? Bitcoin solves that, I love it. Yeah, the trusted third parties, uh, they've always proved a little dangerous. Oh, yeah. A KYC collection, all that stuff. You got honey pots just waiting there. What else um, What else do you want to make sure you talk about on the show? What's important what to you want to talk about? Oh, man. Okay. Uh, I would say every single Bitcoiner should absolutely have a 3D printer. I mean, if you look at how I said it earlier, it's, it's decentralized like Bitcoin. So what I look at is in, in the Bitcoin future, you have your, your money is fixed, but now you also want to be able to do stuff and not rely on people at all times. I know there's a lot of people that want to go off the grid and stuff like that with Bitcoin. Well, 3D printers solve this. Not all of the problems, right? 
but it does give an aspect and a tool to really become your own manufacturing place. And the amount of things that are online are insane. There's so many people out there that have them already and files that you can literally click download, you put it into your slicer and you start printing that file. And it's, it's mind boggling. And I really, my main goal here running crypto cloaks is to try to combine the two spaces, Bitcoin and 3D printing and show how important they both are and how they really correlate to a freedom future that, that I want. And I think everybody else wants in the Bitcoin community and space. Um, yeah, you've got some pretty incredible designs. That's one of the Thanks. things I love about this event. I love the, the unique designs and, and the fact that there's no, sometimes you've got like that corporate art and it's just yeah. really flat and boring. Whereas with Bitcoin, I noticed a lot of the artists in the space really push the limits. And, you know, it's, it's not about being um, antagonistic or anything like that, but it's about being truthful and being honest. And yeah, absolutely. And the, and the biggest thing that I push is Bitcoin is personal. And I think that's the biggest aspect of it and the, the most intriguing, right? When people buy a Bitcoin node case, they can totally customize it to them. And that's how it should be. That's your copy of the blockchain. That's your ledger. Like that should be you. <laughs> that's your node. That's what I love to be able to do. And I love when I print those items out because I get to see the uniqueness in every single one of them. I don't even know how many I've printed anymore, but every single one, like every week, every day, I get to see a new color combo that I've never seen before. I'm like, wow, this is one of my new favorites. And it really does just go back to like Bitcoin is personal. And I really, I really try to push that message. Do you have any particular favorite designs that you've created? Yeah, so I would say it would be a tie between, well, there's like a three-way tie. One of the latest favorites is the Hash Hut Bitcoin node case. I mean, it literally <laughs> looks like the mini mining rigs that upstream data are creating. Um, besides that, the Triton case that allows you to have the dual nodes set up is also like my second favorite. I really, I really, really love that the whole aspect of it and the acrylic side. I think that's my favorite. And then of course you got the Bitcoin grenade. I mean, that's like one of our most iconic items besides any of our node shells is that Bitcoin grenade. And I just love that so much. So I, I noticed that you recently, I noticed that you're responsible for the design of the latest Citadel 21 volume 12. Let's see. Do you want to talk a little bit about the thought process that went behind that or some of the design concerns or considerations? Yeah, or yeah absolutely. Uh, for that magazine cover, it came down to the whole aspect that we literally just talked about is Bitcoin is personal. And I really wanted to showcase that on the front cover. And so I kind of reached out to him and was like, hey, you guys haven't had a, a Bitcoin note on the front cover. And I think I think that's a huge aspect of Bitcoin itself. And I'd love to do a custom node for you guys and then put that on the cover because Bitcoin is personal. And so we started there and then I was like, okay, the Tritons have like replaceable front covers and I'm gonna design literally your guys' logo into it and it's gonna look awesome. So I put that one in our all metal case and then put in the dual nodes and the full LED fans and it, it turned out perfect for really showcasing like Bitcoin nodes in its true nature. I'm just, I'm just a dude building man, just sing single handedly just by myself. But that's how that's how things change. I mean, it's it's people picking up the torch and moving forward, and you know, forging their own path and building the things that people need. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, and the best part about starting your own company, you can bring in people that are just as energetic and enthusiastic about Bitcoin as you are. And I've slowly tried to surround myself with those people, like our graphic artist and one of our designers. And now we're starting to like expand into the 3D printing filament. I'm bringing more people on board for that, and it's. It is truly awesome. Like if you want employees, just go to the Bitcoin community and look for people that are super excited to like work in Bitcoin. And it's really easy to find people. Yeah, I've experienced that as well. It's uh, people in Bitcoin, it's going to sound so elitist and, and snobby, but they're, they're a different caliber almost. Oh, that's not elitist or snobby. That's just the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's 100% the truth. I love Bitcoiners. I, don't, I think the whole community gets a bad rep from a few names, but I mean, if you literally sit down and you don't shit coin or talk shit right away and you generally are curious and you just ask a question, there are thousands of Bitcoiners that will literally come to your aid and answer questions. The only time you ever see people getting chewed out is when you're a jackass in the first place. That's, that's it. I mean, the Bitcoin community in itself is like one of the best communities ever. It is. Yeah, there's an authenticity that runs, you know, really strong and really deep throughout the people here. So 
Yeah, hundred percent. And I, you, you couldn't ask for a better community when you're building something up. I mean, the amount of support that I've gotten alone is absolutely amazing. Wouldn't trade it for the world. So looking forward into the future in the next five or 10 years, what are some of the most interesting developments to you? Ooh, tough questions. Okay. I would absolutely say the lightning network. I think it's just on its first baby steps and we're starting to see that. I think the potential that it has for instant money transfers, we're starting to see. I mean, you got Jack building with strike and stuff like that. And that's literally just opening the can of worms with lightning. I'm super pumped on that whole network. And you have individual communities now literally making like circle of fire or whatever that's called of just all these different communities, building nodes and linking them together and then linking those communities with other ones. I mean, I'm really excited for Lightning. I've been bullish on Lightning for the last three years. That's why I literally design as much as I can around them. What was the rest of the question? I forgot because I got too excited about Lightning. That's okay. I just want to interject. So the, the two communities that I know that are some of the bigger ones that have, like you mentioned, a lot of the more, um, I mean, everybody in the space is super helpful. But um, if you want to talk to people who can help you, like I need to set up a node and I'm starting from scratch and not, you know, say, uh, was it RTFM, which is not helpful. Yeah. Um, so if you want to talk to people like that, uh, two communities I would highly suggest joining are Ring of Fire and Plebnet. Plebnet, 100%. That was the other one that I missed. Yeah, Plebnet. I'm part of them. I got my, uh, I actually got our Crypto Cloaks Lightning Node on Plebnet connected in. You got to open nice. channels. You got to represent. So the other part, uh, the other part of the question. So it was, like, what do you see happening in the next like five to 10 years? Because what are some of the, harder challenges you think that we'll need to solve? The harder challenges are just, I think we're going to have to battle the government. I mean, the fights are coming. You can see the FUD really start to pick up now. You have new FUD articles over energy and uh, security and all these different hacks. I mean, the FBI said they were hacking wallets. Well, everybody knows that's not true. I mean, but the common user doesn't know that that's in Bitcoin. So I think the, our main battle coming up is going to be FUD. We're going to have to really try to get sources out there that are telling the truth and not all this crap that they're making up. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing that I see coming within the five, 10 years, because nobody wants to allow the U.S. dollar to leave reserve currency. They, the governments will hate that. There's no way they want to allow it. So they're going to do everything in their power to stop it. But I'm definitely bullish on Bitcoin for eventually getting there. Absolutely. Yeah, we definitely do have a... Um... We have a battle on our hands for sure. There's all sorts of ways of thinking about it. You know, is like Bitcoin going to be our reserve currency at some point? Is it going to be just a parallel system? Is it going to be the place you can escape if you want to opt out and you've had your savings dwindle from all of the uh, money printing globally in every country? Right. I don't know what it's going to look like, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with you know reserve currency and, like you said, combating FUD and countries that think that they can regulate us out of existence, which they can't. Good luck. China fucked up. What are people calling it? Like the $3 trillion loss or something? I can't remember what they're saying, but it's like the trillion dollar mistake. And it's so true. They screwed up so bad. They did. Yeah. Anytime you try to control things, they have a way of slipping away on you. That's, the, you. that's the beauty of decentralized networks. Good luck. You can't stop it. Exactly. Exactly. So there's some recent developments in El Salvador. I know Bitcoin 2021. Uh, it was announced that uh, there was a plan. Uh, there's a lot of work that, that Jack from Strike did uh, going down to Bitcoin Beach and working with the people that were there on the ground, uh, putting in all the work for the you know previous two to three years, yeah. getting those communities set up on Bitcoin. But there was an announcement that El Salvador is now making Bitcoin an official currency of the nation. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. I think that's awesome. I know there's a lot of debate. Uh, making it legal tender because then the, the debate is, well, you're forcing all these people to accept Bitcoin and that's not what Bitcoin's about. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough take to look at. You have to, that's a tough one, I think, for all Bitcoiners to really think about is you want it to be the people's money, but then if you force it on them, are you really making it the people's money? And I guess my, it's hard to pick sides. I mean, I, I think it's really good. I, I mean, we want people to use Bitcoin because it's literally their money, their purchasing power. How can you do it without forcing them into it? I mean, natural progression. But if governments are going to force them into it, that's that's a tough call. I mean, I, I really don't even know where I am on that one. That's it's it's that fine line of, well, if we start here and we're like, OK, with governments forcing people to use Bitcoin, well, where does that go down a slippery slope or does it like change the whole world and now everybody starts accepting it. It's a it's a really tough call on that one. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how other countries um, take this on in terms of will they accept it? Will they try to regulate it out of existence? Uh, will they be on board with bringing it on as one of their currencies? Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see how this develops because I, I honestly feel uh, that in the next, probably in the next three to five years, we're probably going to have at least another 10 countries that are looking into Bitcoin. Oh, absolutely. I think I think we're going to start in South America like it already has started, and then it's going to branch out from there all to all the smaller nations. And I think if we can get over to like Africa or somewhere other like continents like that, I think it would really boom too because they're dealing with the inflation and everything else. So I think if we can start helping out there, which I think people are, they're probably doing it undercover. I think that's where we can really, really start progressing. But I agree with you, like three to five years, I think there'll be at least 10 that have it as probably legal tender or something like that. I mean, yeah, I, it's gonna happen. Will the US probably have it? Hell no, they don't use that US dollar, but we can only hope. <laughs> I'm curious to see. I know in, in Canada, there's a number of Bitcoin ETFs. I think there's four. Don't recall exactly in the US if uh, those have been set up yet, but I'm all for, you know, peer to peer, hold your own, hold your own keys. That's what Bitcoin's about. Why do we need all this other stuff? Like it's cool. And everybody said ETFs were going to like push Bitcoin to like millions, but I, I don't know. I'd rather have it peer to peer. Like you said, that's, that's what it's based on. We don't need all these other institutions, but that's where the, all the money comes from. And that's what people try to say well if you want bitcoin to hit a million bucks you need big institutions coming in pushing your prices up because that's the only way it's ever going to get it are they right i don't know maybe <laughs> probably but that's a that's a tough one too yeah it's, it's multi-factored i mean that's certainly the way that the system did work but with bitcoin it really breaks that paradigm anything's possible at this point yeah exactly scares a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> i know it does but that's the best part bitcoin yeah. is scary but it's only scary to the people in power that's that's how you look at it the average person really isn't scared of it because it, it's not going to ruin their day. It's going to ruin all the elitists. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I think people that have uh, perhaps abused their power just because they think they can. I love that Bitcoin disrupts that. Absolutely. 100%. There are going to be some people listening to the show, you know, maybe they've been on the fence about Bitcoin. They're, um, they're not really sure about it. They're still thinking, ah, it's like dark web, you know, internet money. Uh, oh boy, dark what web do I know money. about that? Right, yeah. Right? Some of the original <laughs> <Great. part. laughs> Yeah, right, dark web money. And they're still yeah. pushing that narrative. It's hilarious. Yes, yes, unfortunately. So what would you say to those people? Um, what would be some good resources they could go to to really get a grasp on what is Bitcoin and how can they get started? How can they take their first steps? Oh, God, go on YouTube and then find reliable sources on there like BTC Sessions. Listen to like Nick Carter and his mining. Preston, there's there's a lot of sources out there. Just stay away from the fucking shit coin ones. And also stay away from all the YouTube videos that are literally like just dudes that are looking up at the sky and like super excited for some reason with their mouth wide open. Don't don't click on those. They're just going to show you crap. Find reliable sources. I, I like BTC Sessions. He always lays down the facts and he has a lot of good walkthroughs to really get into the, the space itself. So yeah, he does. Um, I've linked out to his work before and uh, I'll definitely link it to uh, the uh, show notes in this episode. There, He's got a really good brand new to Bitcoin playlist. Yeah, exactly. That's literally where I send everybody that wants to get into Bitcoin. I just send them there and be like, start your journey here. Ask me questions after that. And I'll put you on the right path. Yes, 100%. Like you said, like Bitcoiners are, you know, we uh, may seem kind of ornery and set in our ways, but really it's all about, you know, protecting people from making stupid decisions. We get a bad rep for just trying to help people because we've all been down that road. Like I've been down that road. I got into the shitcoin game right away because everybody thinks that's where you make all the big money right away. No, you lose out and then you learn. Like you don't need that currency for anything. Like why do you need a currency to buy a hot dog? It's hot dog coin. Why the hell do I need hot dog coin? You don't need that. Just stupid shit like that. And I, I think that's where Bitcoiners get a bad rep because all the alternate coins are like, well, well, my, my currency is worth something. It's like, no, it's not. We've been down that road. We all got pumped and dumped. We lost money and we're trying to save people from that. Yeah, I always say be aware of any entities that have large marketing budgets. And that's the problem. They got a lot, they got large marketing budgets. If only I could have that budget. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, now that's one of the things I, I love about the Bitcoin space is like, we just find a way, right? Like it's, yeah. it, it doesn't matter if we have, you know, like we could have, $100 to our name, a great idea. And 
Um, somebody who grows that business uh, is far more successful in the long run than somebody who has a ginormous marketing budget. Yeah, they flake in a year or two. And while Bitcoiners, they, they will sustain and build throughout years. I mean, you see it all the time. All the all the coins that when I first got into it are gone. I mean, they're, they're gone. They're, they're at zero. So <laughs> that just tells me everything. Yeah, it's interesting to see when people get into the space and they're fairly new and you know there's there's always that you know the one or two people at the the bitcoin meetups and they're like oh have you heard about you know whatever coin of the day the kindest thing you can do in that situation is is gently steer the other person yeah, away right. Right? <laughs> yeah. or publicly you know poke holes in their logic so that people can be like oh yeah yeah i, I actually didn't think about that yeah be straight up that's uh bullshit and you control all of it got it all right next <laughs> Right? <laughs> Sellouts, man. Everybody's yep. got a price, especially when they get big enough. I don't think everyone does. The fastest way to wreck your reputation in this space is to put out a tweet saying, you know, I know I've heard about such and such, but you know, what really about it? Like you start asking questions about like another protocol. Do you want your reputation to die? Bring up any alternate coin and actually give it a shot and you will immediately get destroyed by everybody. <laughs> like, it's just hilarious which they should i mean why why are you doing that you know why they're doing it they're they made money on the background that's the only reason they're ever shilling that shit mm -hmm. after preaching certain things for years they they finally sold out like you want money but what are you getting you're getting fiat that you don't even care about maybe they're getting paid in bitcoin but still i mean I, you better sell out for a huge paycheck where you don't need anything else on any platform because why else would you do it it doesn't make sense to me yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, ultimately, like what you do in, in any space in life itself is, is your choice. But but yeah, there's an integrity to Bitcoin and Bitcoiners that, you know, we, we don't trust, we verify. And, you know, we look at people's actions and we look at repetitive actions over time. And, you know, we look at character. Character is really important. Oh, 100 percent. Character is like the best part about Bitcoin is usually hardcore Bitcoiners have the best character. And that's what I love about it. You don't really meet any people that I've met yet that are like shady characters for the most part. And if they are, they always reveal themselves because that's what happens. All right. So we should probably close this episode. But before we do, um, I always like asking if you have a question for our audience. If you don't have a 3D printer, why not? That's my question. And how can people reach out? How can they find you on various social media and website? Yeah, uh, website is cryptocloaks.com. I'm guessing you're going to put that URL in the description so it's easy. I won't yes. spell it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, on Twitter, same thing, CryptoCloaks. Uh, we stream a 24-7 live stream of our one of our printers. That's on Twitch at CryptoCloaks. I think that's it. We also, oh, ooh, I want to do this. If you want to get into 3D printing, you should definitely check out a page that we put together for everybody just to learn at it and see the software and printers and everything and kind of understand uh, that is 3d printers go burr b r r r dot com and then also we have a telegram group where people can ask questions on 3d printing and really uh, try to get help or anything learn about it and that is 3d printing bitcoin dot com and that'll take you right to the telegram group so we're trying to we're trying to spread out and get as many people into 3d printing bitcoin that's why there's so many different <laughs> places that'll be all be on our main website so it should be pretty easy well rick thanks so much for joining the show and i really appreciate you coming on as a sponsor i'm super excited about it you have an amazing quality product and uh, i'm looking forward to putting together my full node absolutely everybody should run a full node because then you're above average person that's what elon said <laughs> i can't believe he said that still like what the average person isn't going to run a, a Bitcoin node. And then I love everybody right now tweeting out their Bitcoin nodes. I'm like, you guys are all above average. The biggest thing, the biggest challenge sometimes uh, when you're learning something new is just getting started and finding yeah. a good source. I know, again, a, a big shout out to BTC Sessions, who's a friend and well-respected community member in the space. He has a really good playlist on that. So I'm going to be using that, referring to that as I set up my node. Um, I know that Umbrel is also, you know, fairly easy, fairly low friction way to get started. And then MyNode. There's yeah, MyNode's another one. And then you got like Raspy Blitz also. Yeah, so Raspy Blitz is a little bit more technical, but I still love them. That's literally where I got started from and built note cases for. Nice. And I, it's really not that bad. They have an amazing walkthrough. Cool. Thanks, Rick. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me on.